So here we go. We're getting set to get this game underway. Glad to have you along as the first pitch is coming your way here at 315 Pacific time on an overcast day here in Southern California. Koverik working from the stretch, and the first pitch of the ball game is a fastball in there for a strike. Nothing and one to count. So you take a look at what Hong has done. He's also a pitcher on the team. Against Heritage, he went 0 for 3 on Monday. Here's the next offering. Fastball catches the corner for strike two. Nothing and two to count. That's what you like to see here in the first part of the ball game. Get a couple strikes over. So an 0 for 3 did Hong on Monday against Heritage Christian. He struck out three times. He did walk once. So he did he reach a base. Next pitch from Kovarik is outside ball one. Prior to Monday's game against Heritage, he did score in the first three games, meaning he's gotten on base, but just not able to reach against the Warriors. The next pitch in the dirt, ball two, two balls and two strikes. The other thing that the Nitro's pitching staff has to worry about, throwing too many pitches. They had to count 0-2, and we've seen it time and time again where they try to nibble around the plate instead of going after the batter, end up giving up a free pass. Outside ball three with a fastball, and the count runs full now, three balls and two strikes, and if you're Thomas, you don't want to lose him here. You had him 0-2. So Hong with an RBI, three runs scored, seven at-bats, 14 plate appearances, no batting average, but a 500 on base percentage, and strike three called on the outside corner, and Hong caught looking. First strike out of the game for Koverik, one down, and that will bring up Dylan Gallagher. Gallagher, the shortstop for the Dragons, wearing number six, comes into the contest with a 250 batting average, he has three hits. He scored three runs. He's driven in a run, and he has a stolen base. So a 250 batting average for the right-handed hitting shortstop for the Dragons. And the first pitch from Koberic is over for a strike. So back-to-back -back batters in which he was able to put across a strike. So nothing and one the count to Gallagher. Koberic likes to work from the stretch, even with nobody on. It delivers the next pitch, swinging. There's a ground ball foul down by the third base coaching box. And the count goes nothing and two. So Gallagher at the plate. He has a couple doubles. He's a junior. Goberic with an 0-2 count is ready. Sets and delivers, and the fastball swinging. That's pulled foul down the third baseline. And the count remains nothing and two. So Gallagher ahead in both pitches, able to get around on it and pull it foul. The Nitros against Arlita gave up 10 runs on four hits. Against San Gabriel gave up eight runs. Uh, checked out against Southgate, gave up eight runs on six hits. Against Monroe, four runs on four hits. Here's the next pitch. Swing and a miss, and down he goes. So, Koberik starts out back-to-back -back strikeouts. We've got two down, and that brings up the number three hitter, Jacob Bridges, the center fielder wearing number 10, another right-handed hitter. Bridges hitting 231 on the season. He has three hits. He's driven in four, scored three times, and has three stolen bases. And the first pitch is a curveball across for a strike. So three straight batters have gone down in the count, nothing and one after the opening pitch. Looking to quick make a quick work. The team batting average for the Dragons, 236. Pitch high and inside with the fastball. That will even the count in the ball and strike. So they have a 236 batting average. Their on base percentage is 386 as a team. They've stolen 16 bases. They've scored 19 runs on 21 hits. And for their pitching staff, an ERA of 1.81. A ball and two strikes to count. A ball and one strike to count. And the count just off the mark, a little bit high, and the count goes to two balls and a strike now. So Bridges up. Two balls, one strike to count. Two men down as Hong and Gallagher both go down on strikes when the top half of the first inning. Next pitch. Hits him, and he'll take his base. So another free pass and a runner aboard with two outs. That brings up the cleanup hitter, Troy Lindemann. A 
where he's number 25, has a batting average of 429. He has three hits. He's driven in one, scored four times, a couple stolen bases. His on-base percentage is 636. Obviously the guy that can hit. There goes the runner showing bunt. The pitch is high, and it will be a stolen base as Wong drops the ball. So that puts a runner in scoring position now with two outs, and you're a cleanup hitter at the plate for the Dragons, looking to capitalize here on a two-out rally. We've seen it a couple times this year where the Nitros have given up some runs with two outs. The opposition scoring some runs with a two-out rally. Govaric trying to shut him down here. The pitch, fastball, waved at and missed. One ball, one strike to count. Thomas with his first hit batter of the season when he plunked Bridges. The next pitch, waved at and missed. Down in the count now is Lindemann, uh, one and two. So now Thomas, a pitch away from getting out of it. He has eight strikeouts on the season with the first two here this inning. Runner with his lead away from second, sizable lead. Here's the one, two. Inside, check this swing, no swing. So the count evens up at two. Lindemann on Monday in the 4-2 victory over Heritage Christian. He went one for three, scoring twice. He was also hit by a pitch once this year, but looking to drive in a run. There's a bouncing ball towards short. Jenks has it, fires on the run, throws to first in plenty of time, and that will end the inning. 6-3 on the putout. No runs, no hits, no errors. And a man left on. At the end of half an inning, the Dragons nothing. The Nitro's coming up. We are back after this here on EdenRocksRadio.com. Arroyo Vista Inn is a historic bed and breakfast centrally located in the hills of South Pasadena, just 15 minutes from downtown L.A. They offer nine unique rooms with beautiful views, cozy beds, and modern amenities. Enjoy impeccable service, daily breakfast, and afternoon refreshments. All rates include breakfast, parking, Wi-Fi, and tax. Check them out on the web at arroyovistain.com or call them at 323-478-7300. Are you in the market for real estate services? Then you need Michelle Downey. Michelle combines years of experience and knowledge to get the job done right. Michelle Downing is a founding partner of Partners Trust Real Estate in Pasadena. Whether buying or selling, you need Michelle Downing. She will help you find the residence that is perfect for you. Call Michelle at 626-696-4848. Check her out on the web at thepartnerstrust.com. Speed Pro Imaging specializes in larger-than-life graphics and can provide you with the highest quality graphic design and print. Services include banners, signs, posters, window displays, vehicle wraps, and a whole lot more. Their mission is to exceed your expectations. Speed Pro Imaging is located at 6106 San Fernando Road in Glendale, or you can check them out on the web at speedprolanorth.com. Speed Pro Imaging is a proud supporter of Nitro's Athletics. So we head to the home half of the first inning with the Nitro's coming to the plate, having shut down the Dragons in that first inning, only giving up a hit batter. The lineup for the Nitro's leading things off, Dave and Edom, followed by Ethan Aldretti, then Darian Jenks, Joel Leon hitting fourth, Nolan Wong fifth, and Trent Lucerarian, the designated hitter, batting sixth. And then rounding out the lineup, Mike Titchener, Nate Burke, and Seth Harley. So Edom leading things off, hitting 400 on the season. Now check that. He's hitting 417 on the season. He's 5 for 12, has four singles and a double. He's been hit by a pitch four times. He scored six runs. He's driven in five and walked twice. He has an on-base percentage of 611. The Nitros come into the contest as a team hitting 296 and their on-base percentage of 408. Their 296 batting average is the highest batting average they've had as a team in a couple of years. And so David will look to get things started here for the Nitros in the home half of the first inning. On Saturday, he went two for three, had a couple singles, opened up the game, 
getting hit by a pitch. Stole a couple bases, and then against Monroe, he opened up the game getting hit by a pitch. Stole a couple bases and scored a run. So back-to-back games in victories, Monroe and in the game against Desert Christian, he was hit by a pitch to open things up. And so here we go. So Evan Nichols up on the mound. He's 1-0 uh, on the season. He's appeared in two games. He started one and the first pitch. Fastball at the letters for a strike. He's pitched in, uh, Nichols has pitched in seven innings. Allowed four runs, only one of them earned on nine hits. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Missing outside, and the count evens at a ball and a strike. He's walked five and struck out four, or check that. He's walked three and struck out six. Probably the number two pitcher in the rotation. Next pitch taken high, ball two. So Lindemann, the senior, is the number one pitcher on the staff, and then Nichols, a freshman, making the start here today. The next pitch swung on, foul back, and the count evens at two balls and two strikes. So we're in the bottom of the first inning. Nitro's looking to get things going after shutting down the Dragons. Looking to improve upon that two-game winning streak. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Taken in the dirt, ball three, and the count runs full now. Three balls and two strikes. So the payoff pitch upcoming here for the Nitros. A battle here to open things up in the home half of the first inning against Evan Nichols and David Edom. Now the Nitros bench starting to get into it. Nichols into his windup, and here's the payoff pitch. Fastball taken high, ball four, and Edom is aboard with a walk. So the leadoff hitter draws the walk and forces Nichols to throw a few pitches. And so for Nichols, that's the fourth walk he's given up this year in seven innings. So Edom taking his lead from first, being held on there by Thrasher. Aldredi at the plate, first pitch, swung on, fouled off. Nothing in one the count. Hitting 400 on the season, has four singles. He has three stolen bases. Oh, check that. Three runs scored, two stolen bases, and he's driven in a run. David with a big lead at first, being held on there by Thrasher. Nichols working from the stretch, delivers. There goes the runner, and the pitch is fouled off. And Aldredi now down in the count, nothing in two. Not wasting any time, hacking at two pitches. Usually you like to see the number two hitter take a couple pitches and try to allow the leadoff hitter to maybe move into scoring position and pick up an RBI opportunity. But, Nathan, uh, but Ethan's just up there hacking away, looking to drive the ball somewhere. Down in the count, nothing and two. He went one for three on Saturday with a base hit. Here's the pitch. Swinging, there's a ground ball, double play situation. To Corsi at second, goes to short Gallagher, back to first, double play. Wow. 4-6-3 on the put out. And you've got two down, just like that. And that brings up Darian Jenks. So the pitcher's best friend and a rally killer is the double play. Corsi to Gallagher to Thrasher, and we've got two away for Darian Jenks. Jenks on the season, hitting 333. And he takes a pitch in there for a strike. Nothing and one to count. Five singles, five runs scored, five RBIs for Jenks. Takes a big cut, comes up empty. Nothing and two to count. So now Nichols with an opportunity to get out of this inning without giving up anything. Just a walk and that's it. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swung on, fouled off. And Jenks stays alive, nothing and two. On deck, should we get that far? Joel Leon. So the Nitros play today, and then they play tomorrow. And then they come back next Wednesday. Those are the next couple of games on the schedule. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing, and there's a line drive. Caught by the shortstop Gallagher, and that will end the inning. A nice play by... The shortstop. 
And so the Nitro squander an opportunity when the leadoff hitter gets aboard. A double play, a line out, and the inning comes to the close. At the end of one, scoreless, back after this. Cleaning Service has been cleaning churches, private schools, and offices for over 30 years. And now you can take advantage of their experience, knowledge, and skills and have your facility cleaned by a company that will take a personal interest in both your regular and special cleaning needs. Call Scandia Cleaning Service at 818-388-5546 for a free estimate. Call 818-388-5546. That's Scandia Cleaning Service, where all work is done with care to your satisfaction. Do your child a favor and open a checking and savings account for them at Los Angeles Federal Credit Union. Los Angeles Federal Credit Union helps young people make smart financial choices with free financial literacy classes and low-rate loan programs customized for first-time borrowers. Great customer service, financially secure, Los Angeles Federal Credit Union is the smart choice for you and your child's future. Visit them online at www.lafcu.org. Los Angeles Federal Credit Union, your financial source for life. So we head to the top of the second inning. No score between the Nitros and the Dragons. And due up for Foothill Tech, you'll have Thrasher, Corsi, and Caswell, 5, 6, and 7 in their lineup. So Kovarik out for his second inning of work. He struck out two. He did hit a batter in that first inning. The Dragons left a runner on at second as Bridges was hit by the pitch, stole second, and was left there when Lindemann grounded out to short. So Thrasher leading off the inning. He's a sophomore hitting 273 on the year. He's got three hits and 11 at bats. He scored three times. He's driven in five. He does have a double. He's also struck out four times and walked once with an on base percentage of 308. He's a left handed hitter standing in. So Koberic with two strikeouts in the first inning is ready and deals. And the fastball catches the corner, strike one. So nothing in one to count. So Koberic now on the season with eight strikeouts. Next pitch. Check swing, no swing as the pitch was outside for a ball to the left-handed hitting thrasher. One ball, one strike to count. Outfield playing straight away. Infield is back. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled off over the first base dugout. That runs the count to a ball and two strikes to Thrasher. So Foothill Tech with the opening season loss to Fillmore, 11-3. Beat Buckley 5-1, Desert Christian 8-3, and Heritage Christian 4-2. Next pitch catches the corner on the outside part of the plate, down around the knees, and down goes Thrasher. One away, that's the third strikeout for Koberic, and that brings up Gage Corsi, a junior. Has three plate appearances. He's 0 for 3. Actually, if you look back, he's 0 for 2. He did reach once. And he scored a run in the breaking ball. The first pitch to him is low and away. Ball one. One to know the count to the junior. Second baseman. He struck out. He was actually hit by a pitch. That's how he reached. It was a ball. The next pitch runs and hits him on the head. And he might be done. Fastball ran high and tight. Was not able to get, the, get away from the pitch. And it hits him in the head. Second hit batter of the game for Kovarik. Actually, they switched from the lineup. That's actually not Corsi. That is number 23, Lewis. So Patrick Lewis at the plate gets hit in the head. So 
Well, that's what they did. They wrote down the wrong number on the scorecard. They have number four down, not number 23. So that's what it is. They put the wrong number down. So Patrick Lewis is number four. Not that that really matters to you guys listening, but but his jersey number is 23. Or is it? So runner at first, and that brings up Trey Caswell. Showing bunt, takes a pitch high, ball one. One another count. So Caswell be, will be looking to move the runner along here in the second inning. He's a senior. He has a 333 batting average. He's two for six on the season. He's scored a run. He's driven in a run. He struck out twice. The pitch swung on and missed. The throw down to second, not in time. A stolen base for the Dragons. So whoever's running for Patrick Lewis gets the stolen base. The throw was there. It's digged, scooped, and tagged by the second baseman, David Edom, but not in time. And so now a number, five number five, that's uh, Valencia. Running at second base, Victor Valencia. Next pitch is a fastball taken high. So two balls and a strike to count now to Caswell. So Valencia taking his lead away from second, being held on there by Jenks. Here's the pitch to the plate, swinging. There's a ground ball towards short. Jenks has it, his place to first. He throws in time, stretched by Burke. The out retired at first, advancing to third is Valencia. And we've got two away. So two outs, runner at third, and that brings up the pitcher. Evan Nichols, chance to help his cause with a hit here. Nichols hitting 125. He's one for eight on the season. He's driven in two, though. He struck out six times on base percentage of 125 as the pitch is low and away, ball one. Liam Miller, the third baseman, on deck. Nichols hitting eighth in the lineup. So runner down the line at third. Goverick working from the stretch, delivers. Fastball taken high. 2-0. Two outs here in the second inning. Next pitch inside taken for ball three. 3-0 three the count. The 3-0 pitch misses off the mark. Ball four. Now you've got runners at the corners. So two hit batters and a walk for the Dragons here in this game. Runners at the corners. Two away for Liam Miller, the number nine hitter in the lineup, wearing number eight, a sophomore, hitting 200 on the season. He's one for five. <laughs> and the pitch, fastball, letter high, strike. So Miller has four strikeouts in six plate appearances. And he's one for five officially at the bat. Burke holding the runner on at first. Koberic from the stretch. There goes the runner. The pitch is high. The throw down comes back to the pitcher. Koberic wasn't even aware that the ball was going to come back to him. One ball, one strike to count. So a stolen base for Nichols. Runners at second and third now for the Dragons with two outs here on the top of the second inning. Pitch is high. Two balls and a strike now. So three free, free passes have benefited the Dragons so far in the first two innings, but they haven't been able to capitalize yet. Swing and a miss. And now Koverik, a pitch away from getting out of it. 
if he can throw a good pitch here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Top of the second, no score. Koverik from the stretch is ready and delivers on the pitch. Just missing high and outside, and the count runs full, three and two. So now an all-important pitch, because you don't want to walk the bases loaded. There's the 3-2 offering. Fastball in the dirt, ball four, and the bases are loaded. For the top of the lineup, Tyler Hong, he struck out his first time up. Hong is the sixth batter to hit for the Dragons here in the second inning. Left-handed batter, again, he struck out his first time up. Wearing number nine. And the pitch. Fastball taken high, ball one. Again, Hong with no batting average, or actually he's now, uh, yeah, no batting average. He has yet to get a hit. In eight at-bats, he's 0 for 8. But he's reached base a couple of times. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike to count. This should be a pretty big opportunity for him to get his first hit of the season here, drive in some runs. He does have an RBI. That was against Desert Christian in an 8-3 to three victory. One ball, one strike to count. The pitch from Koberic. Fastball taken outside. Two balls and one strike. You've got Valencia down the line at third. Nichols at second. Miller at first. Two away here in the second. Leadoff hitter Hong at the plate. Left-handed batter against a right-handed pitcher. Infield back behind the runners. Outfield straight away. Here's the next pitch. Fastball taken high, and the count goes three and one. So three balls, one strike. The count hitters count here with three and one. Got to put something there. Otherwise, you walk in a run. Here's the three one. High ball four, and the walk brings home a run. So Valencia scores from third. Nichols takes third. Miller to second. And Hong gets an RBI with the walk. Third walk offered up with a couple hit batters. Again, five free passes. You take a look at that first game again. He gave up seven walks, seven free passes as the pitch catches the outside corner for a strike to Gallagher. Nothing in one to count. Gallagher struck out his first time up. That was in the first inning. Second batter of the game. He's 0 for 1. Again, coming in hitting 250 on the season. Next pitch, waved at and missed, and now down in the count, nothing and two is Gallagher. Gallagher had two hits against Desert Christian, had a hit against Fillmore for his three hits on the season. He also has seven strikeouts on the year. The 0-2, strike three, catches the corner, and Colbert gets out of it. But he does give up a run. That's his fourth strikeout of the game. And for the Dragons... They pick up a run. No hits. There are three walks, a hit batter, and three men left on. At the end of an inning and a half, Dragons on top, 1-0. We're back after this. Pasadena provides family-friendly care for the entire family. Their team is second to none when it comes to a caring and generous staff. Dr. Craig Chung and Dr. Leslie Jung believe that everybody deserves to have a beautiful smile. They are also Invisalign certified, meaning clear braces. Located at 1318 Fair Oaks Avenue, Suite A in South Pasadena. Call them at 626-795-5978. Check them out on the web at cjsmiles.com. That's Fair Oaks Orthodontics in South Pasadena. Do you want to be a part of a television studio audience? Audiences Unlimited has been helping people see their favorite sitcoms live since 1982. Hit shows such as Growing Pains, Home Improvement, Friends, Will and Grace, and Two and a Half Men. Contact audiencesunlimited.com to get your chance to visit a working studio lot, be on the set of popular television shows, and see your favorite stars in person. They offer free tickets on their website. They also offer fundraising opportunities for groups of 10 or more. Visit www.audiencesunlimited.com and get your free TV tickets today. This is a unique Hollywood experience not to be missed. So back here at Glendale High School as we get set for the home half of the second inning. The Dragons on top by a score of one to nothing. 
Due up for the Nitros, he will have Leon, Wong, and Trent Lucerarian, the designated hitter, 4, 5, and 6 in the lineup. So Victor Valencia will take over at second base. Came in as a pinch hitter, or a pinch runner, I should say. Nitro's got their leadoff hitter aboard in the first, but then a double play. Extinguished that, and then Jenks with a line out to short. And the inning comes to a close. In the second inning this year, the Nitros have outscored their opponent one nothing coming into the game. So with that run in the second inning, the opposition with a run in the second, the Nitros with a run in the second. So Leon, leading things off, takes a pitch outside, ball one. One and oh the count. Joel wearing number 25, he's hitting 200 on the season, has three singles. Three runs scored. Two RBI swinging pulls it foul down the first baseline. One and one to count. Struggled a bit on Saturday. He went 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. He did walk twice, scored twice, and stole a base in the stat building game against Desert Christian. Next pitch taken outside. Two balls and a strike account. So Nichols out for a second inning of work. Offered up a walk in that first inning. That's it. Here's the 2-1. That comes, nearly hits Leon. I think it was thrown behind him. 3-1 the count. The Nitro's bench gets up and gets chatty after that pitch. Thrown behind Leon. Again, a freshman on the mound for the Dragons. Here's the 3-1. That's outside ball four, and Leon draws the walk. So the second inning in a row, the Nitros have their leadoff hitter aboard, and that will bring up the catcher, Nolan Wong. He's 4 for 9 on the season, batting 444, but does lead the team. All hits are singles. Has a strikeout, a walk, and an RBI. Joel at first does have a stolen base on the year. He's being held on there by Thrasher. We've got a sizable lead at first. A right-handed pitcher, Nichols, up on the mound. So Wong standing in, a left-handed hitter. Back-to-back lefties for the freshman to face. They throw to first, not in time, as Leon gets back to the bag standing up. one nothing, Foothill Tech here in the top of the second, or the bottom of the second inning. They got their run in the top of the second. Here's the next pitch. Taken inside. So ball one, that's five of six pitches this inning for Nichols have been a ball. Leon taking his lead. Here's the pitch swing, and there's a line drive over the second baseman into the right center field gap. The center field, the bridge is up with it. Leon, who had to hold there for a minute because of the line drive, can only advance to second base. And so with nobody out here in the home half of the second inning, you've got back-to-back Batters aboard for the Nitros. A walk by Leon and a single for Wong, and that will bring up the designated hitter, Trent Lucerarian. The first hit of the ball game, too, for the Nitros and really for both teams. So Leon away from second, Wong from first. The corner's playing in. Middle infield is double play depth. Outfield playing straight away. Trent on the season. Hitting 300, he's 3 for 10. Swings at the first pitch and fouls it off toward the first base dugout. Strike one to count. He has three singles, three RBI, two runs scored, two strikeouts and a walk. So now the Nitro's threatening here in the bottom of the second. Here's the next pitch. Runs inside. One ball, one strike to count. Mike Titchener on deck. And then uh, Nathan Burke. One ball, one strike to count. Nichols is ready and deals, and the pitch waved at and missed. One and two the count. Nichols threw against Buckley. Started the game, and he also made an appearance against Fillmore. Got the victory against Buckley in the 5-1 win on the 27th of February. Here's the one-two pitch. Curveball waved at and missed, and down goes Trent. 
First strikeout of the game for Nichols. We've got one away, and that will bring up Mike Titchener. He's batting 500 on the season, three for six. He has two singles and a double. He's driven in three and scored twice, and he swings at the first pitch, sends it down the right field line, but it's hooking foul. Long strike one. On Saturday, he went two for three, had the single, double, two RBI. He scored twice and walked once against Desert Christian. We got runners at first and second here with one out. Leon away from second, Wong at first. Nichols working from the stretch, checks the runner at second, sets at the belt and delivers, and the breaking ball runs inside. One ball, one strike the count to the junior. Playing right field for the Nitros. Been in right field the last couple of years. Also sees uh, some action at pitching. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled at the plate. One ball, two strikes the count now to Mike. Again, got overclassed, uh, overcast skies here in Glendale. Slight breeze starting to pick up. And a bunch of noise coming from the Nitro's dugout. Here's the one-two offering. Breaking ball catches the outside part of the plate for strike three. And down he goes. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Nichols. We've got two away, and that brings up Nate Burke. Burke hitting 500, one for two on the season. He has a single. He's walked twice, scored twice, and driven in a run. He was the winning pitcher on Saturday against Desert Christian. That 19-2 victory. He went four innings in that game, struck out six, allowed one earned run, and three hits. And the first pitch runs inside, ball one. Running over the count. The next pitch is in there for a strike. One ball, one strike the count to Burke. Two away, runners at first and second. He went six innings against Burke, uh, Buckley did Nichols. Struck out six, walk three. Now they've got Leon in a cotton a rundown between second and third, and he's thrown out at third. So the Nitros run themselves out of an inning. Don't know what that was about. It goes 1 5 on the put out, and the inning is over. No runs, a hit. No errors. And a man left on. Well, I guess you can say it was a mental error on the bases by Joel. At the end of two, Dragons lead at one nothing. We're back after this. Ladies, are you looking to rearrange your room? Don't leave it in the hands of your man. Let Interiors by Jada provide you with a design concept that will make your room feel comfortable and be beautifully functional. Interiors by Jada is dedicated to giving you a perfectly designed space any place in your home. Whether it be the living room, kitchen, bedroom, or bath, their focus is to make each space a place of beauty while creating functionality and use. Put your room in the hands of the professionals. Contact Interiors by Jada at 818-481-8992 or check them out on the web at www.interiorsbyjada.com. Tequila's Restaurant in Burbank offers the best authentic Mexican food at great prices, including lunch Monday through Thursday for only $5.99 and dinner buffets for only $7.99. Enjoy a great all-you-can-eat brunch on both Saturdays and Sundays. Go to their website, www.tequilasrestaurant.com, for the latest specials and download coupons for even greater savings. Tequila's Restaurant is located at 4310 West Magnolia Boulevard in Burbank on the corner of Pass Avenue. Call them, 818-845-7217. Flowers Talk in Burbank is a nice, family-run flower shop with the best prices in town. At Flowers Talk, you will find a wide selection of floral arrangements, or you can select the flowers of your choice in their do-it-yourself section. Stop by Flowers Talk in Burbank and let their expert staff help you create the best flower arrangement. If they don't have it, they will get it for you. Mention Burbank or Burroughs High School and receive 10% off your entire order. Flowers Talk, located at 2460 West Victory Boulevard in Burbank or on the web at www.flowerstalkburbank.com. 
So we head to the top of the third inning. one nothing Dragons on top. And due up for Foothill Tech, you've got Bridges, Lindemann, and Thrasher facing Kovarik in the third. And the first pitch to Bridges taken high, ball one, as he was showing bunt. So Bridges had a hit against Fillmore, a hit against Buckley, and a hit against Desert Christian. So going into Monday's game, he had a three-game hit streak, and he was held hitless. Here's the next pitch. Swung on and missed. He was hit by a pitch and stole second and was stranded at second back in the first inning. He scored a run in each of the first three games this year and drove in four. Pitch taken high. Two and one the count. Again, coming into the game, hitting 231 on the season before today's action. He struck out five times so far this year. Here's the next pitch from Kovarik. Swinging, there's a ground ball that will get into left field for a base hit by the glove of the sliding Jenks. That's short for the Nitros. So that's the first hit of the ball game for the Dragons. Their leadoff hitter is aboard. In the first inning, the leadoff hitter struck out. In the second inning, the leadoff hitter struck out. Here in the third, it's a base hit. So we are in that all too interesting third inning. That brings up the cleanup hitter, number 25, Troy Lindemann. He's 0 for 1, grounded out to short to end the first inning. Again, coming in, hitting 469. Has a hit in three games. Did not play in the Fillmore game. There goes the runner, the pitch taken for a ball. The throw goes into center field. And so now the runner is on his way to third. Here comes the throw to third, not in time. Now Bridges in scoring position. So stolen base, a throwing error, and a runner at third for the Dragons with nobody out here in the top of the third inning. Foothill Tech leading one to nothing. So now an RBI opportunity for Lindemann. He's got one on the season. Chance for Foothill Tech to extend their lead. Yep, ball one. Next pitch outside, ball two. Two and over the count. Foothill Tech three and one on the season. The Nitros two and two. Corners playing in. Middle infielders about halfway. Showing bunt. The squeeze is on. The bunt is up, and it rolls foul up the third baseline. So the squeeze was on. The pitch was high, and the bunt was down. But it's a foul ball. We saw that happen. earlier and the Nitros were able to get a double play out of it. That was against Arlita in the second inning. They tried the sacrifice bunt. I think it was and he got out or missed it and then they threw the runner out back going to third. There's a ground ball towards short. Jenks is up with it. His throw is to first. The run will score. The out recorded and the Dragons now lead 2-0. on the put out, an RBI for Lindemann. That's his second run batted in on the season. 2-0 to score, and that brings up Cole Thrasher. Thrasher 0-for-1 today, struck out, caught looking last inning. Again, hitting 273 on the year. Has three hits, and the pitch thrown behind him with a fastball, ball one. He had a hit against Fillmore in the 11-3 loss. Had a hit against Desert Christian and one against Heritage Christian. Was hitless against Buckley. He has a strikeout in each game. So in each of the first five games this year, he has a strikeout. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Fastball taken outside, 2-0. He's walked once, one sacrifice. He reached on an error one time as well. He's driven in five, three against Desert Christian. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Taken high, ball three. So 3-0 the count. We are in the uh, third inning. A ladybug on the computer being attacked by ladybugs. So 3-0 the count. Kovarik working from the stretch. The infield back, outfield playing straight away. He delivers and the fastball and therefore strike at the knees. So Valencia on deck. 
He was the one that came in for Lewis after Lewis got hit in the head in his first at-bat. Three balls, one strike to count. Kovarik is ready and deals, and the pitch is a line shot towards Short. Jenks is there to make the catch, and we've got two away. So two outs for Victor Valencia. So Valencia getting his first at-bat. He's hitting 333 on the season. He has a stolen base, actually two now technically, since he got a stolen base earlier today. He scored a run. He has a strikeout. He's walked twice. 333. Here's the pitch from Koberic. Fastball swung on. There's a soft liner towards Burke at first. He makes the catch, and the inning comes to a close. But for the Dragons, they pick up a run. They do that on a hit, a stolen base, a throwing error, and an RBI for Lindemann. So a run, a hit, an error, and nobody left. We head to the bottom of the third, 2 nothing. Foothill Tech on top. We are back after this. The Sausage Kingdom in Glendale offers their world-famous gourmet of sausage sandwiches, grilled and served on their fresh-baked onion roll. Choose from a variety of delicious sandwiches off their menu, including the hot Italian, bratwurst, Polish, and chicken apple, or perhaps one of Jody Maroney's hot dogs, such as the giant Kobe beef, the Coney Island, or their Chicago style. Jody Maroney's located in the Americana on Brown Boulevard. You can also check them out on the web at jodymaroney.com. That's Jody Maroney's Sausage Kingdom, home of the hot dog. So we head to the bottom of the third as the game is moving right along. 2 nothing. Foothill Tech on top. And for the Nitros, due up, you'll have Burke, who was at the plate when Leon got picked off. Don't know what he was doing. Just got away from the bag and was thrown out going to third. And then Harley and then Edom. So 8-9-1 and one in the lineup. So in that third inning, the opposition picks up another run. Both teams now have scored. Uh, the Nitros have given up 14 runs in the third inning of the ball games this year. They had a big third inning against Desert Christian, so they've scored 14 runs in the third inning, all coming in that one game. See if they can have a big inning as the first pitch runs inside to Burke. That's when you got to lobby that it hits you. Bench yelling to take one for the team. Speaking of hit batters, David's been hit the most in the leadoff slot. He's been hit four times. Here's the 1-0 pitch from Nichols. Curveball taking strike at the letters. One ball, one strike to count. We're in the third. Nichols out for his third inning of work. A freshman, his third appearance this year. Here's the next pitch, fastball swing, and there's a fly ball towards center field. The center fielder's not going to get there as it falls in front of Bridges. And Burke aboard with a base hit. And for the third inning in a row, the Nitros with their leadoff hitter aboard. That's the second hit in the ball game for the Nitros. And that brings up Seth Harley. Harley looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 5 on the season. He's walked twice, scored a run. He scored that uh, game-winning run against Monroe. And he checks his swing. He went around, strike one. Nothing and won the count. He caught on Saturday against Desert Christian. Now back at third base today. Burke with his lead away from first, being held on by Thrasher. Here's the pitch from Evans, taken high, or from, uh, yeah, Evan Nichols. High and outside to throw down to first, not in time. One and one the count to the bad with the plate, the sophomore. Third baseman for the Nitros. Here's the next offering from Nichols. Swung on, popped up. That's fouled back out of play into the shot put area. That's behind us, and now Harley down in the count. Nothing and two. So one ball, two strikes to count. Nichols working from the stretch. Ready, delivers, and the pitch. A check swing fouled at the plate. Harley just got a piece of it to stay alive, and so he will battle for another pitch. Go, 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 go. 
Burke taking his lead from first. Outfield playing straight away. Midland fielders double play depth. The pitch is outside. Outside, ball two. 2-2 two, two to Harley. Looking to move Burke along. They're down 2 nothing, so they need some runs. And now the pitcher steps off, has to rethink it. He's got his baseball pants up around his knees, so you can see his stirrup, you can see flesh, and then you see his pants. A curveball missing low, and the count runs full now, three and two. Nichols with his half, with his hat kind of cocked off to the side. And now the umpire telling the Nitros bench that you can only make comments to your own team. You can't address the opposition. So a full count. Harley at the plate. Burke away from first. The pitch. Fastball bounces. And now you have runners at first and second with nobody out for your leadoff hitter. Third walk offered up by Nichols. So a bit of a jam here in the third inning. Trailing 2-0. The Nitros looking down to capitalize as they've got their bottom two in the lineup on base. And a chance now for the top of the lineup to come through. So Davin at the plate. He's 0 for 1. Or check that he walked his first time up. Takes a pitch high. There's a back pick to second base. And a nice stop by Gallagher, the shortstop, going to the second base side of the bag to keep that ball from going into center field. Otherwise, people would be advancing. So Davin with a hit in each of the first four games, showing bunt. Takes a pitch on the inside corner for a strike. Throw down to second, not in time. Again, on the second base side to the bag. Burke back to the bag. One ball, one strike to count. So Hedem, it looks like, is called upon here to maybe put the ball down in a bunt and try to sacrifice the runners over. One ball, one strike to count. Pitch taken inside, ball two. Not showing bunt that time. Two and one. Ethan Aldretti on deck. So David with a hit in each of the first four games. He had two hits against Desert Christian, a double against Southgate. Here's the 2-1. Fastball taken high, ball three. Three and one the count. Now a hitter's count here for Edom at the plate. Nichols has to come with it, otherwise he's walking the bases loaded. Runners with their leads. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Taken for a strike on the inside part of the plate, down around the knees, and the count runs full now, three and two. So Edom went full count in his first at back, drew the walk. He was forced out at second on the double play off the bat of Aldretti. Now he's up there facing a full count. Three balls, two strikes to count. The pitcher is ready and deals, and the pitch swung on and pulled foul down the left field line. And we'll do it again. Three balls, two strikes to count. This is a big at bat here. A big pitch coming. Could be an inning changer for Nichols or for the Nitros, if depending on what happens. Burke at second. Harley over at first. Eat him at the plate, the leadoff hitter. Looking to put the ball in play. Full count. Nichols working from the stretch. Sets at the belt. Now he's ready and deals. And the pitch taken low, ball four, and I think a sigh of relief there from the batter as that was awfully close. Back-to-back -back walks. Base is now loaded. Fourth walk offered up by Nichols. And now you've got a conference on the mound by the catcher, Lindemann, talking to his pitcher. And that brings up Ethan Aldretti. Hitting to the 4-6-3 double play in his first at-bat. Did not play against Arlita. Had a base hit against Southgate. Two hits against Monroe and one against Desert Christian. He's walked twice, struck out once on the year. So he puts the ball in play. At least so far he has. With nobody out, the infield drawn in with the bases loaded. Here's the pitch. Swinging, fouled back. Almost seems like the bat's too heavy for him. Nothing in the one to count. 
So he had he faced three pitches in his first at bat, swung at all three. So four pitches he's faced, he's gone after him. Nothing and one the count, the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike two. So nothing and two the count to Aldretti, the number two hitter in the lineup on deck. Darian Jenks. Runners with their leads, infield playing in on the grass. Here's the pitch. Swinging, fouled back. So the count remains nothing and two. Just a sophomore as well in his first, first varsity season for the Nitros. Burke down the line at third. Harley at second. Here's the pitch. Taken outside. Ball one. I believe that's the first pitch that Aldretti hasn't swung at. Wise move. Davin over at first represents the go-ahead run. But right now you need to put the ball in play. One and two to count. Nichols from the stretch. Looks over to third. Checks the runner at second. Delivers, and the pitch swinging, he pops it up. Third base side, third baseman over there. Miller in foul territory makes the catch, and we've got one away. And that brings up Darian Jenks. Jenks wearing number 16, standing in with the bases loaded. Again, coming into the game, hitting 333. He lined out to short his first time up. He also has a hit in each of the first four games. He had two hits against Desert Christian. Takes a fastball in the outside corner for strike one. He had a base hit against Orlita, one against Southgate, one against Monroe, two against Desert Christian. He struck out once, walked once. He's driven in five. He had four RBI against Desert Christian on Saturday. Here's the pitch. Swinging, pops it foul, first base side, back out of play. In fact, Jenks and Edom tied for the team lead in RBI with five. So Burke down the line at third, hardly at second. Edom over at first with Jenks at the plate. Jenks and Leone looking to cash in, try to tie this thing up. Here's the pitch from Nichols. Curveball in there for a strike, and down goes Jenks. He's caught looking. We've got two away. Third strike out of the game for Nichols, and that brings up Leon, who walked and then was thrown out, I guess trying to steal third, but the pitcher had the ball when Leon went and got picked off. Infield drops back now with two outs. There's the pitch. Fastball taken high, ball one. One to know the count. To the cleanup hitter, senior, center fielder, left-handed batter, wearing number 25. Had two hits against Arlita, one against Monroe. Could use a hit here as the pitch is outside, ball two. Two and oh the count. The Dragons with one in the second, one in the third for their two runs. Nitro's trying to counter with a couple here. Swinging, pulled foul toward the first base dugout. Two balls, one strike to count. On deck, the catcher, Nolan Wong. Leon, the sixth batter to come to the plate here this inning. Two and one the count. Nichols, the pitcher, the freshman, up on the mound into his third inning of work, looking to get out of this bases-loaded jam, swinging. There's a fly ball down the right field line hooking towards foul ball territory as the right fielder Hong goes over there to take a look but it's back out of play and now Nichols a pitch away from getting out of it Burke with a base hit Harley with a walk Edom with a walk and the Nitros with the bases loaded and nobody out and then Aldretti pops up to third Jenks strikes out caught looking and Leon at the plate 2-2 count the pitch Swing, and there's a ground ball towards first. A nice play for Thrasher. Underhand toss to Nichols covering, and the Nitros can't cash in as the Dragons get out of it. 3-1 on the putout, and for the Nitros, they pick up no runs. They do that on a hit. No errors, and they three, leave three men on, and that's another thing that they've been not able to do is they have left so many men on in scoring position so far in the first five games, including 
One here in the third inning, actually two with runners at second and third. First base is not considered scoring position. We head to the fourth inning, two nothing. Dragons on top, we are back after this. A wide variety of specialty, retro, and imported sodas, candy, and novelty gifts. Zots, Pop Rocks, Bazooka Bubblegum, and a whole lot more. Make a special soda gift basket for your favorite nitro. Beat those back-to-school blues with your favorite candy. Rocket Fizz, located at 138 North Brand Boulevard, is independently owned and operated. Check them out on the web at www.facebook.com slash Glendale Rocket Fizz. Rocket Fizz, come be a kid in our store. So we head to the fourth inning, 2 nothing the score, and the first pitch here in the fourth inning to Caswell is taken outside, ball one. Trey Coswell, he's 0 for 1. He grounded out to third his first time up. And the next pitch swinging. There's a fly ball in the right field. That's going to dunk in for a base hit, a little Texas leaguer. And so the leadoff hitter aboard with a single to open up the fourth inning. Second hit of the ball game for the Dragons. And that brings up the pitcher, Eben Nichols, hitting in the eighth slot in their lineup. He walked, stole a base, and was stranded at third his first time up. Has one hit on the season. That was against Buckley. Showing bunt, takes a pitch high, ball one. He drove in two in that game. Six strikeouts on the year. That was his first walk of the season and his first at bat. Showing bunt, bunts it down. Koberic, nope, Wong the catcher has it. Throws the first in time for the out. Now they've got the runner off a second, but Burke couldn't get the ball out of his glove to throw to second in time, and so the runner back to the bag. So the sacrifice down. Nichols does his job. 2-3 on the put out, one away. And that brings up the number nine hitter, Liam Miller. He walked and was stranded at second his first time up. So a runner in scoring position for the Dragons. Koberic out for his fourth inning of work. He's allowed three walks, two hit batters, two hits, Two runs, both earned, and the pitch is high, ball one. So one to know the count to Miller. The leadoff hitter, Tyler Hong, on deck. Runner with his lead away from second. A check of the runner, Koverick delivers, and the pitch is in the dirt, ball two. The Dragons with one in the second, one in the third. Two runs, two hits, no errors for Foothill Tech. No runs, two hits, and an error for the Nitros. Koberic with his next pitch. That's high and inside, ball three. So 3-0 oh the count.
His lone hit of the season came against Desert Christian from Miller. And the pitch is high, and he draws a walk for the second consecutive at bat. That puts runners at first and second. Fourth walk offered up by Kovarik. Sixth free pass. And Coach Chan heading out to the mound to talk to his pitcher. So with runners at first and second, one away, you've got the top of the lineup. Hong, then Gallagher. Hong struck out his first time up. That was in the first inning to open the ball game. Then in the second, he walked, and that brought in a run. That's his second RBI of the season. Now he's up there with a chance to add to that with a runner at second in Caswell. He opened up the inning with a single. Nichols bunted him over to second. They would have had an opportunity to try to pick him off because he rounded second base, did Trey. Had a big turn, but Burke couldn't get the ball of his glove to throw down. And then Miller with the walk. So Hong 0 for 1. Still looking for his first hit of the season. A left-handed batter standing in, showing bunt. The pitch is fouled off as the bunt was in the air toward the first uh, third base dugout. Strike one to count. Caswell at second, Miller at first. We're in the fourth. Two nothing. Dragons on top. Runners with their leads. Nobody holding the runner on at first. Showing Bunt again. Bunt laid down back to the pitcher. His place to first. So Kovarik throws over to first in time for the out. That advances the runner. So Caswell to third. Miller to second. The sacrifice down by Hong, but we've got two away. That goes 1-3 on the sacrifice. So with two outs, that brings up Dylan Gallagher. He's 0-2 for two with two strikeouts. Coming into the contest, hitting... 250. He's now 3 for 14 on the season, having two strikeouts in this one. He has eight strikeouts now on the season, and the first pitch, fastball, waved at and missed, strike one. Nothing in one to count to Gallagher. You've got Caswell down the line at third, Miller away from second, infield back, outfield playing straight away. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Kovarik. Fastball taken high. One ball, one strike to count. Kovarik with a long look into the catcher. Now he's ready. Here's the pitch. Catches the corner for strike. So one ball, two strikes to count to Gallagher. Looking to avoid three straight strikeouts in this game. Again, the team batting average was 236 for the uh, Dragons coming into it. Here's the 1 2 offering. Swinging, popped up center field and deep. Going back on it is Leon, still going back. Over the shoulder catch, and that ends the inning. So, what a nice play by the center fielder, Joel Leon, doing a Willie Mays esque style catch as he's going away from the infield toward the outfield wall, over the shoulder catch, and the inning comes to a close. That would be a top 10 highlight film tonight on SportsCenter as Gallagher gave it a ride, but Leone able to track it down, make the catch, and the inning comes to a close. No runs, a hit. No errors. A walk and two men left on. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Two nothing, Foothill tech on top we're back after this rocket fizz offers a wide variety of specialty retro and imported sodas candy and novelty gifts zots pop rocks bazooka bubblegum and a whole lot more make a special soda gift basket for your favorite nitro beat those back to school blues with your favorite candy rocket fizz located at 138 north brand boulevard is independently owned and operated. Check them out on the web at www.facebook.com slash Glendale Rocket Fizz. Rocket Fizz, come be a kid in our store.
So here we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Nolan Wong leading things off, followed by Trent Lucerarian and Mike Titchener. And the first pitch from Nichols is a breaking ball taken low and inside, ball one. Wong singled his first time up. Left-handed batter standing in. Here's the next pitch. Swinging, there's a ground ball to second. Valencia has it. Goes to first in time, one away. That will bring up the designated hitter, Trent Lucerarian, struck out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Trent had a base hit against Southgate and two against Desert Christian on Saturday. Takes a curveball over for a strike. He drove in a run in the last three games. He has an RBI against Southgate, against Monroe, and against Desert Christian. Swinging, there's a ground ball towards second. Valencia has it, goes to first, and it's a repeat from Wong, and we've got two away, back-to-back -back ground outs to second base. And that brings up Mike Titchener. One for three against Arlita. Went two for three against Desert Christian. Drove in two on Saturday, also scored a couple runs. Again, coming into today, he was hitting 500, three for six. Takes a pitch for a ball. So he's now three for seven on the season with that strikeout in his first at bat. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Curve ball taken high, ball two, 2-0 two the count. Nitro's looking to get a two-out rally going here in the home half of the fourth inning. Trailing 2-0. Nichols is ready and deals. The pitch swinging. Hey, guess where it went? To the second baseman. Valencia with it to first, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. All ground balls to the second baseman. So Nichols makes quick work of the Nitros in the fourth. We head to the fifth. 2-0, Foothill Tech on top. We're back after this. So we head to the fifth inning, 2 nothing. Nitros trailing the Dragons, the Nitros. On a two-game win streak, having knocked off Monroe 5-4 to four and come from behind fashion in extra innings, and then took care of Desert Christian on Saturday by a score of 19-2. to two. Meanwhile, facing a 2 nothing deficit against a team that has won three in a row. The Dragons 3-1 and one on the season, lost their season opener to Fillmore, but have won three in a row, including Monday against Heritage Christian. Two runs, two hits, no errors for Foothill Tech. No runs, two hits, and an error for the Nitros. Bridges, Lindemann, and Thrasher. Three, four, and five in the lineup. The heart of this Foothill Tech batting order. Bridges, he's uh, one for one. He singled his last at bat. Scored a run. Before that, he was hit by a pitch. He takes a pitch, low and away. Some interesting offensive strategy last inning. You had runners at runners at the corners 
with one out. And the Dragons decide to bunt. Actually, it runs at first and second with one out, and then the runners decide to bunt. Uh, the Dragons decide to run to bunt over the runners. With two outs, you get second and third, and then Gallagher gave it a ride, but Leon was able to track it down in center field. Make the over-the-shoulder catch to end the inning as the count goes to two balls and a strike to Bridges after a couple back-to-back -back pitches missing the mark. So Colbert out for his fifth inning of work. Here's the 2-1 offering. Taken high, ball three. He has four strikeouts, four walks, giving up two runs on two hits, hit two batters, so six free passes. And the one error for the Nitro is a throwing error that allowed a runner stealing to go from second to third, and that will hit the batter. So Bridges hit by a pitch. He'll take first. Third hit batter of the ball game. And the leadoff hitter aboard, and that brings up Troy Lindemann. He's 0 for 2, grounded out to short both times up. His last time up, though, he got an RBI. That scored Bridges from third. Make it 2 to nothing at the time. So runner at first, Burke will hold him on. Lindemann now at the plate. Goberic from the stretch is ready. There goes the runner. The pitch swinging, popped up. The runner will have to get back to first as Jenks makes the catch, fires to first, looking for the double play, but not in time as Bridges is able to get back to the bag as he was nearly at second base when the ball was hit. So Lindemann pops up this time to short. One down, runner at first for Cole Thrasher. Lined out to short his last time up. Struck out, caught looking back in the second his first time up. Again, coming into the game, hitting 273. 0 for 2, so his average will drop some. It's actually a 3 for 13 now, a left-handed batter. So Bridges had a big lead and a big jump. There he goes, the pitch showing bunt, and it's as a foul the player just missed and dropped by the catcher. So showing bunt, the pitch is for a strike, and the stolen base for Bridges. So now a runner in scoring position for Foothill Tech. And an RBI opportunity for Thrasher. He has five on the season. Next pitch checks his swing, but it's a cross for strike two. Now he's down in the count, nothing and two. Got one away with a runner at second here in the top of the fifth inning. Two nothing. Dragons on top. Making their way down from Ventura. Pitch swinging. There's a bouncing ball towards short. Taken there by Jenks. He's up with it. Throws to first in time, advancing the third on the play as Bridges, and we've got two away with a runner at third for the Dragons. So the Dragons with a runner at third and two outs. They've left a runner at third on twice in this game so far, and the batter is Victor Valencia. He's 0 for 1. He lined out to... First base, his first time up. And he takes a pitch low and away, ball one. He came in for Patrick Lewis, who got hit in the head and had to leave the game. Lewis could be under concussion protocol, depending on his symptoms now, after being hit in the head. Here's the next pitch from Colbert. Fastball running inside. Moving the count to 2-0. and oh. Trey Caswell on deck. Valencia coming into the contest, hitting 333. Actually, check that. That can't be. He has no hits. Pitch in there for a strike. So, uh, don't know what that, that means, but he has no batting average. Sometimes the information you get off the Internet, not the most accurate. Just throwing it out there. 2-1 pitch, swung on, popped up. Hits the... Fence overhang, and the count moves to two and two. So Bridges opened up the inning, getting hit by a pitch, stole second, took third on the ground ball out. Dragons looking to add to their 2 nothing lead. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Kovarik from the stretch is ready, and he delivers, and the pitch swung on and missed, 
and down goes Valencia, and that will end the inning. So for Corberic, he picks up his fifth strikeout of the game. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left. We head to the bottom of the fifth, 2 nothing. Dragons on top. We're back after this. Arroyo Vista Inn is a historic bed and breakfast centrally located in the hills of South Pasadena, just 15 minutes from downtown L.A. They offer nine unique rooms with beautiful views, cozy beds, and modern amenities. Enjoy impeccable service, daily breakfasts, and afternoon refreshments. All rates include breakfast, parking, Wi-Fi, and tax. Check them out on the web at arroyovistain.com or call them at 323-478-7300. Are you in the market for real estate services? Then you need Michelle Downey. Michelle combines years of experience and knowledge to get the job done right. Michelle Downing is a founding partner of Partners Trust Real Estate in Pasadena. Whether buying or selling, you need Michelle Downing. She will help you find the residence that is perfect for you. Call Michelle at 626-696-4848. Check her out on the web at thepartnerstrust.com. Speed Pro Imaging. So we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, 2 nothing. Foothill Tech on top. And do it for the Nitros. You've got Burke, Harley, and then the top of the lineup, Dave and Edom. Burke singled his first time up, was left at third. In fact, go back to that third inning. The Nitros had the bases loaded with nobody out and then went down one, two, three, could not cash in. That was their best opportunity to score in the ballgame so far, having the bases loaded and nobody out. So Nichols out for his fifth inning of work to face Burke. And the pitch swinging. There's a line drive base hit into left field. So Burke back-to-back singles. And he's aboard as the throw comes in from left field all the way to the first baseman. So Burke with the third hit of the ball game for the Nitros. In fact, he has two of the three hits. He came into the contest hitting 500, one for two. So now he's, what, three for four, hitting 750. Harley at the plate, takes a pitch outside, ball one. So will the bottom of the lineup be able to replicate what they did back in that third inning? Get the first two hitters aboard. Burke with a base hit did his job. Harley walked his last time up, see if he can do his job. Takes a pitch inside, ball two. Two and oh the count to number 14. Harley again looking for his first hit of the season. Takes a big cut, comes up empty. Two and one to count. He walked against Southgate, had two walks against Desert Christian, plus an RBI, so he's reached and scored. Just not a base hit yet. Here's the 2-1. Swinging, popped up, hits the overhang for a foul ball, and the count goes to two and two. Two balls, two strikes to count. Nichols, his fifth inning of work. He's given up three hits. He's walked four, struck out three. Burke taking his lead away from first, being held on by Thrasher. Evans working from the stretch. Just sets and delivers, and the curveball waved at and missed, and down goes Harley. Fourth strikeout of the game for Nichols. One down, runner at first for the leadoff hitter, David Edom. He's walked twice. Was left at first back in the third inning and was forced out on the 4-6-3 double play in the first inning. Burke with his lead from first. Nichols steps off, driving Burke back to the bag. Again, Edom coming into the contest, takes a pitch for a strike, hitting 4-17 on the year. He's been hit by a pitch four times. Burke with his lead. Nichols takes a check over there. Now he comes set. Has a sign and delivers, and the curveball swung on, fouled off. First base side back out of play. And the count goes to 0-2. On deck, Ethan Aldretti. The bats have been quiet here today for the Nitros. Only three hits. They've gotten seven base runners but haven't been able to cash anything in. 
0-2 pitch, swing, and there's a fly ball towards left field, and that's going to be caught by the left fielder, Caswell, as the ball just hung up enough for him to run into the gap and make the catch, and we've got two away, and Burke still at first base. So two down for Ethan Aldretti. He's had seven pitches, and he swung at six of them. He's 0 for 2, grounded into the 4-6-3 double play and popped up to the third baseman. And now we've got time at the plate. Came into the contest hitting 400. After going 0 for 2, he'll drop to 333. Burke with his lead from first. Here's the pitch to the plate. Missing inside, ball one. On deck, Darian Jenks if we get that far. Nichols with a look over to first. Now he's ready and deals, and the pitch is outside. Throw down to first, not in time, as Burke gets back to the bag. 2-0. So two balls, no strikes to count. Here's the next offering. Drops in for a strike. 2-1. Two runs, two hits, no errors for the Dragons. No runs, three hits, and error for the Nitros when the bottom of the fifth inning. Nitros play again tomorrow. Here's the next offering. Swinging, that's pulled foul down the third baseline. So we got a round on it, but pulled it foul, and the count goes to two and two. So two balls, two strikes to count. Two nothing Dragons here in the fifth inning. Burke on at first. He opened up the inning with a base hit. Still there. Here's the pitch. Swinging. There's a line shot down the left field line. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Burke will hold that second on a big turn. Now he goes back to the bag as the throw comes in to third. And so a base hit puts runners at first and second for the Nitros. And that will bring up Darian Jenks. Fourth hit of the ball game for the Nitros. Jenks 0 for 2. He lined out to short and struck out, caught looking back in the third inning. Again, coming into the contest, hitting 333. Again, he's had a hit in each of the first four games so far this season. Drove in four against Desert Christian as an RBI opportunity with a runner at second here. Swinging, it's a tapper back toward the mound. Nichols has it. He stumbles, and that's going to be it. He went to plant his foot, his front foot, and he kind of tripped over a, the grass, I guess. Nah, it's just a base hit. And then he had to recollect himself and then kind of tripped again and no throw, so it'll go as an infield hit. So the fifth hit for the Nitros, the base is loaded for Joel Leon. We had the nice defensive play early in the game. Bounced back to the pitcher his last time up. Swinging, there's a line drive and a base hit into right field. That's going to score Burke. And the throw comes into the third baseman, Miller. Everybody else moves up 90 feet. So Aldredi to third, Jenks to second. Burke scores on the RBI single from Leon. Sixth hit of the game, so a run on six hits now, and that play by the pitcher Nichols tripping over himself is costly. And so now Nolan Wong at the plate, a chance to tie it up. Takes a pitch outside, ball one, so a freshman on the mound. In a jam. He's got two outs, though. Bases loaded. A run across here in the fifth inning. Two to one. Dragons on top. Got Aldretti down the line at third. Jenks at second. Leon at first. Infield playing back. Outfield playing straight away. The pitch in the dirt. Ball two. A walk does bring home a run. Wong one for two as a base hit. That was back in the second inning. He's hitting 5 for 11 on the season. Came into the game hitting 444. It's a chance to pick up an RBI and tie the game. 
Pitch runs inside, ball three, three and oh the count. So now Nichols, a pitch away from tying the game up with a walk. Walk does bring home a run, and you know Wong's probably going to be taking here all the way. Nichols, a freshman, a right-handed pitcher up on the mound, is ready and delivers. And the pitch catches the outside corner for a strike. So three and one, and now you've got a hitter's count here. And again, Nichols has to come after the batter because a walk brings home a run. And you'd rather have your defense make the play than give up a free pass. Here's the 3-1 offering. Ball four, and that will tie the ball game. So Aldretti scores from third. Jenks goes to third. Leon to second, and Wong with an RBI walk. That is the fifth walk offered up by Nichols. He's given up two runs here in the inning, both earned. And again, when you look at the pitching staff for Foothill Tech, it didn't look like they had too many pitchers. They used uh, their main guy in seven innings on Monday. So he's unavailable today because he pitched too many pitches on Monday to pitch today, and that means you only have two other guys on the schedule, and I think they have a game still to come either tomorrow or Friday too. The pitch in there for a strike to Trent. Nothing and one the count. 2-2 2-2 tie here in the home half of the fifth inning. Trent at the plate, swinging that pulls it foul toward the third base dugout. Finds himself now down in the count, nothing and two. Trent struck out in his first half bat, and then he grounded out to second in that fourth inning where all three batters grounded out to second. Chance to give the Nitros the lead here with a base hit. Nothing and two the count. Nichols trying to get out of it. Trent came into the contest hitting 300. Runners with their leads. Got big leads all the way around. Here's the pitch. Curve ball, strike three called, and that's going to end the inning. Trent thought the pitch was upstairs, and the inning comes to a close. Fifth strikeout for Nichols in the contest, second time he's gotten Trent. In the inning, though, the Nitros, they do pick up two runs to tie the ball game. They do that on three hits. There were no errors and they leave the bases loaded. Second time this game, they've left the bases loaded. They also did that back in the third inning. It becomes now a two-inning game as we're tied at two as we head to the sixth inning. We're back after this. This is in larger-than-life graphics and can provide you with the highest quality graphic design and print. Services include banners, signs, posters, window displays, vehicle wraps, and a whole lot more. Their mission is to exceed your expectations. Speed Pro Imaging is located at 6106 San Fernando Road in Glendale, or you can check them out on the web at speedprolanorth.com. Speed Pro Imaging is a proud supporter of Nitro's Athletics. Scandia Cleaning Service has been cleaning churches, private schools, and offices for over 30 years. And now you can take advantage of their experience, knowledge, and skills and have your facility cleaned by a company that will take a personal interest in both your regular and special cleaning needs. Call Scandia Cleaning Service at 818-388-5546 for a free estimate. Call 818-388-5546. That's Scandia Cleaning Service where all work is done with care to your satisfaction. Do your child a favor and open a checking and savings account for them at Los Angeles Federal Credit Union. Los Angeles Federal Credit Union helps young people make smart financial choices with free financial literacy classes and low-rate loan programs customized for first-time borrowers. Great customer service, financially secure, Los Angeles Federal Credit Union is the smart choice for you and your child's future. Visit them online at www.lafcu.org. Los Angeles Federal Credit Union, your financial source for life. So we head to the sixth inning. We're tied at two, a whole new ball game here as we get into the latter stages of this one. So the Nitros here on out have scored a run in the sixth, seventh, and eighth innings of ball games this year while shutting out their opponents. Foothill Tech, you've got seven, eight, and nine due up. Caswell, Nichols, and Miller. And the per- first pitch from Kovarik here in the inning. In there for a strike. 
Caswell, one for two. He singled. His last time up was stranded at third and then grounded out to short his first time up. Koberic out for a sixth inning of work on the mound. Swinging, there's a hot shot into right field for a base hit, so back-to-back -back hits for Caswell. And for the second inning in a row, he opens up with a base hit. Third hit of the ball game for the Dragons. That brings up Evan Nichols. He sacrificed, bunted his last time up, walked, stole a base, and was stranded at third back in the second inning. So we will see if he's called upon to bunt again here. Much like last inning. Caswell taking his lead from first, being held on by Burke. They throw over there. Not in time. On deck, Liam Miller, who's walked twice. Now Koverick steps off the mound. So Koverick looks in to get the sign. He's ready. Checks the runner at first. Throws the first. Not in time. Diving back into the bag is Caswell. So Thomas into his sixth inning of work. He went four in his debut back against Southgate. So obviously this is the longest he's pitched. Showing bunt. Pitch is taken for a ball. Throw down to second. Not in time. And a stolen base for Caswell was showing bunt, the pitch was taken for a ball. So now the go-ahead run and score in position for the pitcher, Nichols, and a chance to help his cause here with a base hit. The pitch to the plate again, showing bunt, bunt laid down, first base side, Koverick with it. Underhand toss to first for the out. We've got one away, advancing the third is Caswell. And the sacrifice moves him over. So one out, runner at third for Miller, who's walked twice. And then it's the top of the lineup. That's what happens when you get on base and you're able to make some things happen. Get a stolen base, then a sacrifice, and now you've got the go-ahead run 90 feet away with many different ways in which you can score a run to take the lead. Infield drawn in now with a runner at third and one out. Gobert could use a strikeout here to help his cause. And the pitch, first pitch in there for a strike. Nothing and one the count. So Miller back-to-back -back walks. Koverick four walks offered up in the ball game, along with three hit batters, seven free passes. Here's the strike one offering. Swinging popped up down the right field line. Titchener moving over to foul territory makes the catch. And the throw comes in to the catcher, Wong. Holding the runner, though, is Caswell with that throw in from right field. And Titchener makes the catch, and we've got two away. So it wasn't deep enough to get the runner to tag. And with two outs, we've got Tyler Hong, the leadoff hitter. Struck out, walked, and sacrificed. So he struck out, walked, sacrificed. And with that walk, he drove in a run back in the second inning that gave the Dragons, their 1-0 lead. 2-2 two -two tie here in the sixth. Swing and a miss. Strike one with a fastball. Hong swinging for the fences there. Coming up empty. Kuverick looking to take care of things himself. The strike one pitch. Fastball swung on, fouled back. And now Hong down in the count. Nothing and two. Hong in his fourth at bat against Koverik here. And again, he has no average coming into this contest. Still looking for his first hit of the season. Pitch is taken high, ball one. So one ball, two strikes to count, two outs. Koverik from the stretch, checks the runner at third and delivers and the pitch. Breaking ball, low and in. Nice stop behind the plate by Wong to keep the runner at bay. And the count moves to two balls and two strikes to Hong. So we've got two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two, two tie here in the sixth inning. And the next pitch. Swing and a miss, and that ends the inning. So Kovarik comes up with a big pitch there to end the threat. And Caswell stranded at third. 
So the leadoff hitter gets aboard and can only get to third, and that's it. No runs, a hit, no errors, and a man left. We head to the home half of the sixth inning. We are tied at two, and we are back after this. Odontics in South Pasadena provides family-friendly care for the entire family. Their team is second to none when it comes to a caring and generous staff. Dr. Craig Chung and Dr. Leslie Jung believe that everybody deserves to have a beautiful smile. They are also Invisalign certified, meaning clear braces. Located at 1318 Fair Oaks Avenue, Suite A in South Pasadena. Call them at 626-795-5978. Check them out on the web at cjsmiles.com. That's Fair Oaks Orthodontics in South Pasadena. Do you want to be a part of a television studio audience? Audiences Unlimited has been helping people see their favorite sitcoms live since 1982. Hit shows such as Growing Pains, Home Improvement, Friends, Will and Grace, and Two and a Half Men. Contact audiencesunlimited.com to get your chance to visit a working studio lot, be on the set of popular television shows, and see your favorite stars in person. They offer free tickets on their website. They also offer fundraising opportunities for groups of 10 or more. Visit www.audiencesunlimited.com and get your free TV tickets today. This is a unique Hollywood experience not to be missed. So we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. We're tied at two and due up for the Nitros. You've got Titchener, Burke, and Harley. Seven, eight, and nine in the lineup. Then if anyone should get on, we flip the order and the top of the lineup comes up. So Nichols out for a sixth inning of work. He's given up two runs on six hits, striking out five, walking five. Again, a freshman pitcher up on the mound for the Dragons. Dragons only had four pitchers on the roster that have seen action so far, so if there's anybody else that can pitch, they haven't pitched yet. And that means that you've got, you had Lindemann pitch on Monday. Got Nichols here, so that means there's only two guys left on the roster that can pitch. Like I said, I believe they've got another game this week. Not sure, but I thought I read that somewhere. And the first pitch of the inning is going to be inside to Titchener. Ball one. Got to turn and take that. Get on base. One and know the count. He struck out and grounded out to second. Curveball swinging. There's a hot shot towards third. Nice field by Miller at third. Throws to first in time. They don't call it the hot corner for nothing. We've got one down. One down for Nate Burke. He's uh, two for two with two singles and a run scored. Opened up the third inning and the fifth inning with a base hit. Was stranded at third in the third, but was able to score in the fifth inning. The first run of the ball game for the Nitros. Curveball missing inside. Ball one. Hardly on deck. One to know the count. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Two-two tie. Two runs, three hits, no errors for the Dragons. Two, six, and one for the Nitros. Pitch catches the outside corner for strike one. One ball, one strike to count to Burke. Again, Burke had a couple hits on Saturday. Swings, pops this one up towards right center field. The right fielder moving toward the gap is there to make the catch. And Burke is retired for the first time in this ball game. And we've got two outs for Seth Harley. So Harley walked and was stranded at second back in the third inning, and then he struck out in the fifth. The Nitros left the bases loaded in the second, or in the, uh, in the third inning, check that. And even though they scored two runs, they left the bases loaded in the fifth as the pitch is taken for a ball. So one another count to Harley, looking for his first hit of the season. Pitch swing and there's a check swing back up the middle. This shortstop fields it. Gallagher behind the bag, and then he can't come up with it, and it will go as an infield hit. Nice play by Gallagher to get there and knock it down back behind the second base bag, but just couldn't handle it to come up and throw it, and so it goes as an infield hit. Seventh hit of the ball game for Nichols. And with a runner at first, that brings up the leadoff hitter, David Edom. He's walked twice and flew out to left field. He's 0 for 1. Now it looks like we might have a, a, a change, maybe a pinch runner at first. 
for Harley. And that's going to be the case. Looks like Adrian Cole is going to run at first for Harley. And then Harley will re-enter for defense in the seventh. Well, maybe not. You've got Cole talking to the coaches near the dugout. And so Cole now will pinch run for Harley at first base. So let's see if Cole tries to get into scoring position here before David takes a swing. So Cole on at first, being held by Thrasher. Let's check the stats, see if Cole has any. Nope, he's just 0 for 3 on the season, so he hasn't reached base yet. This is his first base running opportunity. Pitch catches the corner for a strike. Nothing and one the count. Aldretti on deck. So Cole with his lead away from first. Nichols here in the sixth inning. Trying to get out of it. The pitch, there goes the runner. Pulled foul down the third baseline. I think that actually got a piece of the hitter off his ankle in the count. Nothing and two. So it'll take a moment for him to walk that off. So nothing and two the count. Two outs. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Runner at first. Two-two tie between the Nitros and the Dragons. Game five of the season for the Nitros. They're two and two on the year. They've got a two-game winning streak. They defeated Monroe five to four in walk-off fashion, and then knocked off Desert Christian 19 to two on Saturday. The Dragons come in with a three-game win streak. They're three and one on the year. One and two, right? No, I think it's zero oh and two. Yep, just 0-2, two, oh two. two strikes to count. So nothing and two to count. Davin back in after walking off the ball, hit off his ankle. Cole away from first. And here's the pitch. Swung on and missed, and down he goes, and that ends the inning. So for the Nitros, no runs, a hit, no errors, and they leave a man on. We go to the seventh inning. Tied at two, we're back after this. Are you looking to rearrange your room? Don't leave it in the hands of your man. Let Interiors by Jada provide you with a design concept that will make your room feel comfortable and be beautifully functional. Interiors by Jada is dedicated to giving you a perfectly designed space any place in your home. Whether it be the living room, kitchen, bedroom, or bath, their focus is to make each space a place of beauty while creating functionality and use. Put your room in the hands of the professionals. Contact Interiors by Jada at 818 818- 481-8992 or check them out on the web at www.interiorsbyjada.com. Tequila's Restaurant in Burbank offers the best authentic Mexican food at great prices, including lunch Monday through Thursday for only $5.99 and dinner buffets for only $7.99. Enjoy a great all-you-can-eat brunch on both Saturdays and Sundays. Go to their website, www.tequilasrestaurant.com for the latest specials and download coupons for even greater savings. Tequila's Restaurant is located at 4310 West Magnolia Boulevard in Burbank on the corner of Pass Avenue. Call them 818-845-7217. Flowers Talk in Burbank is a nice family-run flower shop with the best prices in town. At Flowers Talk, you will find a wide selection of floral arrangements or you can select the flowers of your choice in their do-it-yourself section. Stop by Flowers Talk in Burbank and let their expert staff help you create the best flower arrangement. If they don't have it, they will get it for you. Mention Burbank or Burroughs High School and receive 10% off your entire order. Flowers Talk, located at 2460 West Victory Boulevard in Burbank or on the web at www.flowerstalkburbank.com. So we head to the seventh inning, tied at two. We've got a pitching change as Darian Jenks will come in and take over for Thomas Kovarik. He went six innings. He struck out five, walked four. Allowed two runs on three hits and hitting three batters. So 2-2 two, two tie here in the seventh inning. David Edom goes to short. Andrew Doe is in at second base. Don't forget, tomorrow we've got another game coming your way right here 
3 o'clock, EdenRocksRadio.com, as the Nitros will take on Canyon from Canyon Country. So do up for the Nitros. You've got Gallagher, Bridges, and Lindemann, 2, 3, and 4 in the lineup. Jenks, he has two outings. He's pitched in eight and two-thirds innings, struck out 13. He's walked four, allowed a run on two hits. His ERA is .81, and he's 1-0 on the season. And the first pitch is taken low, ball one. Gallagher 0 for 2, or check that, 0 for 3. He has two strikeouts, and he flew out to center field. On that play that Leon make, over the shoulder catch. The pitch is popped up. Foul territory here on the first base side, and it's off the roof of the first base dugout. And that will even the count at a ball and a strike. So Gallagher, Bridges, and Lindemann. Nitro's trying to get out of this and see if they can get another walk-off win in the bottom of the seventh. So Jenks went four and two-thirds innings against Arlita. Struck out five and walked three. Gave up the run on a hit. And then he went four innings against Monroe, striking out eight, walking one, and got the victory. He also hit a batter. Pitch, low and away, ball two, two and uh, two and one the count now. So Gallagher looking to get on for the first time here today. He's 0 for 3. Batting from the right side. Jenks is ready and deals and the pitch. Missing outside. Ball 3. The Dragons have gotten their leadoff hitter aboard in each of the last four innings. Scored once. Swing and a miss, and the count runs full now, three and two. In the third inning, Bridges reached, came around to score. And then the fourth inning, Caswell reached and was stranded at third. Three balls, two strikes to count. Here's the pitch from Jenks. Fastball, soft liner, one hopper to Harley at third. Has it, sets, and air mails it to the football field. And so the first error of the ball, the second error of the ball game, actually, for the Nitros, We'll put Gallagher aboard. And so the leadoff hitter is aboard. He represents the go-ahead run. And that brings up Jacob Bridges. He's been hit by a pitch twice, singled, and scored a run. He has a couple of stolen bases. In fact, he has three stolen bases. And then Bridges scored on the throwing error from Wong on the steal. Showing bunt, pitch is taken low, ball one to Bridges. So one hit and three at bats, plus a couple hit batters. He's been busy, he scored, was left at third and left at second. Gallagher taking his lead away from first. Jenks working from the stretch, throws to first. Not in time, Burke not able to hold on to the ball. Would have been a close play. One to know the count. Outfield playing pretty much straight away. Leon shaded towards right center. Out in center field. Middle infielder's back. Throw to first. Not in time. Gallagher back to the bag. Let's check and see Gallagher if they've got. Yeah, he's one for one in stolen base attempts this year. He's got a big lead at first. Being held on there by Burke. Not going. The pitch showing bunt. Bunt is fouled at the plate. They tagged the runner at second, or checked out the runner at the plate as Wong was able to catch it. Tagged the runner coming out of the batter's box. And so Bridges is retired, but Gallagher advances to second and sacrifices down. So one out, runner at second for Troy Lindemann. He's 0 for 3. A couple of ground balls to short, a pop-up to short. He also has an RBI driving in bridges back in the third inning. The pitch low and away. Ball one. Nice stop by Wong behind the plate to keep the runner at bay. So Gallagher at second represents the go-ahead run. Due up for the Nitros in the seventh. You'll have Aldretti, Jenks, and Leon. 2, 3, and 4 in the lineup. And we've got timeout as the catcher goes over to the dugout. Now he's ready. So 1-0 and the count. Okay. 
Lindemann, the catcher, standing back in. Right-handed hitter versus Jenks, a right-handed pitcher. Doe carving the runner at second, trying to keep him close to the bag. Base hit, drives in a run. Pitch swung on, fouled back. Count evens at a ball and a strike. We got one out here in the seventh inning. 2-2 two -two tie. Dragons got a run in the second, one in the third. The Nitros answered with two in the fifth. Jenks checks the runner at second. Turns, throws, they've got him picked. Throw to second to Doe. Doe throws to third, the ply, the tag, and Harley not able to get the tag down in time as the throw seemed to be high from Doe at second base and the runner, Gallagher, able to slide in under the tag. And now Coach Chan going to go out and talk to the uh, base umpire about the call. So a high throw, and Gallagher able to slide under the tag. You get a better throw, and the guy's out. So now the go-ahead run 90 feet away. Bridges reached in the fifth inning. He opened up the fifth inning and was at third base as a ball and two strikes is the count to the batter. But Bridges got to third in the fifth inning with nobody out, and the Nitros were able to get out of it without giving up the run. So they're going to have to do it again here. This time, though, they've got one out with a runner at third. So the infield drawn in with the runner at third, and now Lindemann will go down and talk to his third base coach. That will send Wong out to talk to his pitcher. Maybe I can talk to somebody. We did see a sacrifice or a suicide squeeze earlier attempted. Would we see it again here? Harley's playing even with the bag at third. Should probably end a little bit more. So Lindemann back in and we're set. A ball and two strikes to count. Here's the pitch from Jenks. Curveball missing low, two and two. Jenks could use a strikeout here. That would help his cause a lot. We're in the seventh, two two tie. Nitros and Dragons. Jenks in relief for Koberic and the pitch. Strike three called, catches the corner at the knees, and we've got two down. First strikeout for Jenks. We've got two away in the inning, and that brings up Cole Thrasher. He struck out, lined out to short, and then grounded out to short. And the first pitch, a fastball taken outside, ball one. So one to know the count to Thrasher on deck, Victor Valencia. Jenks working from the stretch with the runner at third. Now he's ready. Gets the sign that he likes and delivers, and the pitch in there for a strike, and Wong fakes the throw down to first, or to third. Oh, yeah. Let's do it next time. One ball, one strike to count. You've got a lefty up there, so Wong really has an open throw down to third if he wants to take it. Nobody's in the right-handed batter's box. Swing and a miss at the next pitch. And now we've got a ball and two strikes to count to Cole Thrasher. So Jenks a pitch away from getting out of it. And what a big out that would be. Stranding a runner at third for the fourth consecutive inning. One ball, two strikes to count. The pitch outside with a fastball, and that evens it up at two and two. So the Dragons, they left a runner at third in the fourth, in the fifth, in the sixth. Can the Nitros make him do it again here in the seventh? In a run-run ball game, that's going to be huge. Nitros, on the other hand, had the bases loaded twice and left them loaded, although in the fifth inning they did pick up a couple runs before leaving the bases loaded. Here's the 2-2 offering. Swung on, fouled off over the third base dugout. So the count remains 2-2. Two and two. Two runs, three hits, no errors for the Dragons. Two runs, seven hits, and two errors for the Nitros. And again with Jenks on the mound, Davin moved over from second to short, and Doe came in off the bench playing second base. Jenks with a strikeout. 
looking for a second one. Here's the pitch. Swinging, pulled foul with the breaking ball toward the first base side. Again, Jenks coming off a four-inning, eight-strikeout performance against the Vikings. He went four and two-thirds innings against Arlita and struck out five. So he has 14 strikeouts on the season on the mound, including the one here tonight. So two and two the count with two outs. 2-2 two -two tie, runner at third, top of the seventh inning. Jenks working from the stretch. Now he's ready and deals on the pitch. Waved at and missed, and Jenks get out, gets out of it as he comes hobbling off the mound. And he's going to have to bat coming up here this inning, so we'll see what that's all about. So he gets two strikeouts in the inning, and the Dragons leave a runner at third for the fourth consecutive inning. No runs, no hits. There was an error, and a man left on. So we head to the seventh. Chance for now the Nitros to get a win here in the bottom of the seventh. You've got a pitching change. Number nine coming in. So Hong will take over on the mound for the Dragons. He'll come in from right field. So Nichols is done. He went six innings. Struck out six, walked five, allowed two runs on seven hits, and both of his runs were earned. So now we'll see what number's out there in right field. So basically Nichols goes to first. The pitcher goes to first, and the first baseman, Cole Thrasher, goes out to right field. And so for Tyler Hong... Let's take a look at his pitching stats. He's 1-1 one one on the season. He's appeared in two games. He started one. He has an ERA of 3.32. He's a sophomore. He's appeared in six and a third innings, striking out four, walking five, allowed three runs, although, I mean, three earned runs, nine runs overall on six hits. And so both starting pitchers now off the hook as far as a decision. And so now for the... Nitros, they will send up two, three, and four hitters, Aldretti, Jenks, and Leon. Aldretti, one for three with a single and a run scored in his last at-bat. So hung up on the mound, a right-handed pitcher, and here's the pitch to Aldretti. Fastball bouncing in the dirt, ball one. Aldretti, Jenks, and Leone. So in the game against Monroe, Edom got the base hit driving in Harley to get the win in the bottom of the eighth inning. Next pitch taken low, ball two. So today, it will be somebody else's turn to play hero. And the question is, who will it be? 2-0 and the count. Here's the pitch from Hong. Swinging, pulled foul down the left field line. Two balls, one strike to count. Hong been in right field, so he was in the game. I don't think he took any warm-up pitches. I don't know. It's kind of hard to see the visiting bullpen from where we're at. But he's been in right field, so you're kind of sitting out there in the grass in the cool of the evening, and now you're called upon to take the mound and try to get some outs. Throw some strikes. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Low and away, ball three. Let's see what he did in his last outing. Was he number nine? So his last outing was against Desert Christian. He got the win. Went two and a third innings. Striking out two, walking three, giving up a run. That was against Desert Christian. 3-1 offering is high. Ball four, and the leadoff hitter is aboard. So Aldretti represents the game-winning run. And Darian Jenks will come to the mound. Now the plate umpire is going to go over and talk to uh, the Nitros. They're making a lot of noise. Seems positive to me. You're not supposed to make any direct comments toward the opposition, but if you're just making noise and cheering and stuff, that shouldn't be a problem. Hell, softball games do it all the time. If you've been to a softball game, they're louder than what the Nitros are right now. Wong took the loss against Fillmore in the 11-3 loss in the season opener. He went four innings, striking out two, walking two, gave up two runs on five hits, two earned runs, but eight overall.
And so now we've got a pitching change after one batter. And that's going to bring up Jacob Bridges now. So Bridges is going to come in from center field. Tyler Hong is going to go out to the outfield. And Jacob Bridges will come in to pitch. And let's see what Bridges has done. So Bridges appeared in a game against Fillmore and Buckley. He's only pitched two innings on the year. He struck out three, walked two. He's faced 19 batters. And that's it. So two appearances for Bridges, the senior. Two innings pitched, three strikeouts, two walks. And the first batter he'll face is Jenks with Aldretti on at first. And then Leon. And then Wong. So a right-handed batter, then two lefties back-to-back. 2-2 -two -two tie here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Both teams come in riding a win streak. The Dragons on a three-game win streak. The Nitros back-to-back -back victories. Nitros last year won two games. They went 2-21-1. And, and so they've matched that win total so far here in four games. Now looking to exceed that. So here we go, Aldretti. On at first being held on by Nichols, the original pitcher, starting pitcher for the Dragons. And Jenks at the plate. He has a hit and three at-bats. Singled his last time up. And the pitch is taken low, ball one. So this is where things could become interesting as far as now you're deep in the bullpen, so to speak. The third pitcher, and you've already used Lindemann on Monday. So you've technically used all four pitchers as the next pitch is taken high, ball two. That's interesting, Hong would come in and pitch to one batter. Because like I said, on the roster, they've only had four pitchers, and this is the fourth one. 2-0 the count. Here's the next pitch. Fastball swinging, popped up, left side of the diamond. Gallagher, the shortstop, under it. He's there to make the catch, and we've got one away. So one out runner at first, and that brings up Joel Leone. He walked and singled, driving in a run. That was back in the fifth inning. He also hit back to the box in the third inning. So a left-handed batter standing in. Bridges is ready and deals, and that one stroked foul down the right field line. He got around on it, but just a little too much, and it goes foul. Aldretti at first. Not the quickest of runners. So Leon standing in. Here's the pitch by Bridges. Fastball taken outside, ball one. One ball, one strike to count. Bridges with an unconventional throwing motion in his pitching kind of comes over the top it's not as fluid as what you might expect from a pitcher the pitch is in the dirt gets away from the catcher Aldretti going to second and there's going to be a no throw by the catcher and so now you have the game winning run at second base and it will be a wild pitch that sends them to second base two balls one strike to count so now let's see what the Dragons do str strategically with first base open, but you've got Wong on deck, another guy that's been hitting the ball. Another lefty, too. Pitch taken low, ball three. So three balls and a strike to count. So Wong on deck and then Trent Lucerarian. Should we get that far? Aldretti away from second, the pitch. Fastball swing and a soft liner that takes a hop in front of the shortstop Gallagher. He comes up firing to first, not in time. And I believe Aldretti was able to kind of interfere with the vision of Gallagher at short as it was a soft liner tailing toward the shortstop. Gallagher fielded off the hop, kind of bobbled it, came up throwing to first, and Leon able to beat it out, and I believe that's probably going to go down as an error. So runners at first and second, and that brings up Wong. You need the out, absolutely, if you were the Dragons, but really that type of play.
it's going to be difficult to swallow because you had a nice play by Aldretti to kind of dance in the way as the pitch to Wong is over for a strike. You had Aldretti kind of dancing in the way between the ball and the shortstop, able to obscure the vision. And the ball died before Gallagher could get there, and then he was kind of between hops, came up firing, but wasn't able to get there. Next pitch taken high. So Wong now with a chance to win the game in walk-off fashion with a base hit. Swinging. There's a fly ball towards shallow right field. Thrasher coming in. Is there to make the catch. Everybody holds as far as the base runners go, and we've got two away. And that brings up Trent. Trent, two strikeouts and a ground out to second base. He's 0 for 3. His cousin, Ethan Aldretti, on at second base. A chance to drive in family and get the win. Leon over at first. Trent came into the game hitting 300. That's three singles and three RBI. Looking for RBI number four to win it. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss on a curveball. Strike one. Nothing and one to count. Could we be headed to extra innings or can Trent pull through? Strike one to count. Three sport athlete at the plate. Here's the strike one pitch. Swing and a miss as the ball's in the dirt, gets away from the catcher, so Aldretti takes third and Leon to second. Another wild pitch in the inning. So now Trent with the winning run 90 feet away. You got two outs, though. 0-2 to count. Bridges is ready. And the pitch taken, strike three called, and that will end the inning. So Trent strikes out, and now we head to extra innings for the second time this year. For the Nitros in the seventh inning, they pick up no runs. They do that on no hits. There was an error, and two men left on. So we head to the eighth inning. We're tied at two, and we are back after this. Kingdom in Glendale offers their world-famous gourmet of sausage sandwiches grilled and served on their fresh-baked onion roll. Choose from a variety of delicious sandwiches off their menu, including the hot Italian, bratwurst, Polish, and chicken apple, or perhaps one of Jody Maroney's hot dogs, such as the giant Kobe beef, the Coney Island, or their Chicago style. Jody Maroney's located in the Americana on Brown Boulevard. You can also check them out on the web at jodymaroney.com. That's Jody Maroney's Sausage Kingdom, home of the hot dog. Rocket Fizz offers a wide variety of specialty, retro, and imported sodas, candy, and novelty gifts. Zots, Pop Rocks, Bazooka Bubblegum, and a whole lot more. Make a special soda gift basket for your favorite nitro. Beat those back-to-school blues with your favorite candy. Rocket Fizz, located at 138 North Brand Boulevard, is independently owned and operated. Check them out on the web at www.facebook.com slash Glendale Rocket Fizz. Rocket Fizz, come be a kid in our store. So we go to the eighth inning. We are tied at two. And due up for the Dragons, you've got Valencia, Caswell, and Nichols. Seven, six, seven, and eight in the lineup. And again, we could be looking at a situation where this is the last inning due to uh, the sun setting off to our left. Jenks out for a second inning of work. He struck out two in his last inning. Gallagher reached on an error, was sacrificed to second, took third on a pickoff move, and was stranded there as Jenks was able to get Lindemann and Thrasher on back-to-back -back strikeouts. The Nitros have combined for seven strikeouts. As the coaching staff are talking with the umpires, And it looks like we're going to get this inning in. Like I said, there's no lights here at Sam Harvey Field, so you're probably looking at a final inning with the sun setting. Now, after Saturday with daylight savings time, then you have an extra hour. So technically right now it would be 6.30 here. And it's only 5.30 right now, so we'd have a whole other hour of sun if this game was next week. And the first pitch to Valencia is taken inside, ball one. 
Valencia 0 for 2, lined out to first and struck out. He came in for Patrick Lewis, who was hit in the head in his first at-bat. Swinging at the next pitch, pops up towards first. Burke there is there to make the one-handed catch, and we've got one down. So one down on an easy out, and that brings up Trey Caswell. He singled his last time up. In fact, he's got two hits in back-to-back at-bats, both singles. Both times he was left at third, and then he grounded out to short, so he's two for three in the ballgame. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball taken outside, ball one. We're in the eighth inning, second time that the Nitros have gone to extra innings here in the first five games. They beat Monroe 5-4 to four in eight innings last week. Here's the 2-2. Two, two. And that's ball two. 2-0 two the count now. Evan Nichols on deck, then Liam Miller. Should we get that far? And then it would be the top of the lineup. So the Nitros like to get out of it here. 1-2-3. You've got one down. Now you're trying to get Caswell. 2-0 the count. Jenks is ready and delivers, and the pitch missing outside, ball three. So the Nitros have today and tomorrow, then they've got one game next week, and then during spring break, it looks like they got four games in five days. That's going to be rough on the pitching staff. 3-0 pitch in there for a strike. So if Jenks can get through here, then tomorrow you'll have a couple people available against Canyon. Be interesting to see who gets the starting nod. Maybe Trent swinging. That's pulled foul. Chopper toward the third base dugout. And the count runs full now, three and two. So let's see if Jenks can come back here and get a strikeout. He has 15 strikeouts in nine and two-thirds innings. Here's the pitch. Swinging, there's a fly ball foul down the right field line. That's out of play. And that's into the foot football uh, stands, grandstands. Count remains full, three and two. Nitros as a pitching staff has 40 strikeouts on the year, including this game. They can use 41 right here. And they get it. Swing and a miss, and we've got two away. And then the ball goes into left field, and they throw it around. So third strikeout for Jenks in two innings, or actually an inning and two-thirds if you want to be technical. Got two outs, and that brings up Evan Nichols. He walked, and then a couple of sacrifice bunts. Well, he can't sacrifice here. You've got two away and nobody on. Breaking ball catches the corner for a strike on the outside part of the plate. Nothing and one the count. Nitros do up in the eighth inning. You'll have Titchener, Burke, and Harley. And then the top of the lineup. Here's the 0-1. Swinging, there's a chopper towards first. Taken there by Burke. He's going to have to take it himself, and he does, and that's going to end the inning. So one, two, three in the top of the eighth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Do or die time for the Nitros. Chance to win it again in walk-off fashion in the bottom of the eighth. We're tied at two. We'll see if they can do it. We are back after this.
So here we go to the bottom of the eighth inning it is. And you've got Titchener, Burke, and Harley do up, and then the top of the lineup. Should we get that far? So Bridges out for a second full inning of work. Last inning, Tyler Hong came in and walked one batter, then was pulled. Bridges came in, finished the inning. He struck out one and got a fly ball to right field. And the Nitros left runners at second and third. Now a conference on the mound by the Dragons. Trying to come away with at least a tie. Don't believe we're going to get nine innings. So this is it. So Titchener 0 for 3. Struck out, grounded out to second, grounded out to third. Good chance for him to get a base hit here and start things off. Coming into today, he was hitting pretty good. Swinging at the first pitch, pops it up towards short. The shortstop is there, and he makes the catch, and we've got one down. That brings up Nate Burke. He's two for three. Had two singles, a run scored, and then flew out to right field in the sixth inning. Here's the first pitch to Burke, taken high, ball one. So Burke on the season was one for two coming into today. He's two for three on the day. Swinging, sends a fly ball towards left field. Caswell going back is there to make the catch, and we've got two away. And now it's up to Harley to get on base to extend the inning. He walked, struck out, and singled. So he's one for two. David Edom on deck, the leadoff hitter. Should we get that far? And the pitch. Fastball missing outside, ball one. One and oh the count. Harley, a sophomore, right-handed hitter standing in. Got his first hit of the season in his last at-bat. Pitch is taken high, ball two. Two and oh. Last time he got on, Cole ran for him. We'll see if he gets on again, if someone runs for him again. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Curveball drops in for a strike. 2-1 and one now the count. Bridges is ready and deals, and the fastball waved at and missed. Two balls, two strikes the count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here's the pitch. Swinging, there's a fly ball towards center field. The center fielder coming in, not going to get there. That drops in for a base hit. He throws to first, and Harley's able to beat it out. So they extend the inning. Does Harley with his second base hit of the ball game, his second hit of the season, and that brings up the leadoff hitter, David Edom. He's walked twice, flew out to left field, and struck out in his last at-bat. So Harley taking his lead away from first, being held on there by Nichols. There's the long look into the catcher by Bridges, and now we've got time at the plate. So no pitch. So the winning run is on at first. And Harley, and he's going to run for himself. And they throw to first, not in time. Harley back to the bag. So 2-2 two, two tie with a runner at first. And now we've got time at the plate. So Bridges pitching in relief, his second inning. He's gone an inning and two-thirds here. Harley at first represents the game-winning run. The pitch in the dirt gets away from the catcher, and that will advance Harley into scoring position on the wild pitch. So now a runner in scoring position with Harley at second base. 1-0 the count. See if the Dragons do anything here with first base open. The pitch, the curveball drops in for a strike on the outside part of the plate. So one ball, one strike the count. He's got an over-the-top throw, so the pitch comes in high and kind of drops in 12-6. to 
on the break. The one one. Curveball again, that 12 to 6 curveball over for strike two. Let's see if he comes back with it here. One ball and two strikes. Here he comes with a fastball. Here's the pitch. Fastball, strike three on the inside part of the plate. And that ends the inning and the threat. And that's the ball game. And we end in a tie. How anticlimactic. Well, it's not a loss, and probably for the Nitros, it's probably a good thing because they really come out and they weren't ready to play. You can tell from the early part of the game that they were not, maybe took the team for granted. I don't know. But it ends in a 2-2 tie. Two runs, three hits, and an error for Foothill Tech. And for the Nitros, they get two runs on eight hits, and they commit two errors. We'll take a break, come back with the totals right after this. 